Yo, what's up guys? It's King Sean here, and in today's video, I'll be bringing you guys with my official Week 6 game preview between the Commanders and the Ravens. I'll be giving you guys some keys to victory, matchups to watch, the injury report, and then my final score prediction. So, if you guys are new to my channel, leave a like down below, subscribe, turn on notifications. I'm on the road to 4,000 subscribers, so if you could, hit that sub button, I'd really appreciate it. And with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. All right, going over the injury report real quick. Tyler Owens, he will be out for Sunday's game, so he's going to miss his second consecutive game. It sucks for him. You know, he's dealing with a shin injury, one of our core contributors to our special teams. So hopefully he can get back soon. And then Jordan McGee and F.A. Obata, they're still on IR, but they were full participants the entire week. It'll be interesting to see whether or not we elevate them off of IR tomorrow. I'm pretty sure Quinn and Peters are going to make the decision tonight. And then tomorrow it will be announced whether or not they will be activated off of IR. Hope to see F.E. Obata activated off of IR again, provide a good amount of juice to the pass rush game. I have liked what I've seen from F.E. Obata over the past couple of years with us. So hopefully he can be activated with Jordan McGee. Don't think he'll get a lot of defensive snaps early on, but as the season goes on, he will get more and more. So we shall see with him as well. And then Brian Robinson, he is a name to watch. He didn't practice all week, which is typically not good. However, he's still listed as questionable. Um, I assume that they don't want to put a heavy workload of practice on him this week. So they kind of rested him this week. But if you don't practice for all three days, then that's usually not a good sign. Now, Dan Quinn said in his press today that they want to take it all the way up to game day with Brian Robinson, meaning that he's going to be a game time decision. So if he feels good on game day um, before workouts, then he'll probably play on Sunday. If they activate or elevate uh, running back off of practice squad tomorrow, then Brian Robinson is probably not going to play. But if they don't, then there's a good chance he does play. So if I had to guess, don't think B-Rob will play, which sucks because, you know, he's our number one running back. That's a bit of a blow to our running back room, but we'll still have Eckler and McNichols. Um, but, you know, I want B-Rob to get healthy. If that means, you know, missing him for one or two games, then I'm all for because it's about the long-term thing with him, you know, longevity. We want him for the long run, not just now, but, you know, for the entire season. So if they decide to sit B-Rob for a game or two to let that knee heal, I would not mind, but we'll suck to not have him out there most likely on Sunday. We may still have him out there on Sunday, but if we don't, then it would suck a little bit. But we do have Eckler and McNichol. Speaking of Eckler, he's going to play, obviously, that heel injury, not a concern at all. Nick Allegretti, Noah Brown, Colin Farrell, Percy Butler, Emmanuel Forbes, Dante Fowler Jr., Phil Mathis, and Quan Martin, they will all play as well. Really nice to have Noah Brown, who didn't play against the Browns last week. He's going to be back this week on Sunday versus the Ravens. And Cleveland Farrell, it will be nice to have him back as well. He hasn't played since week two against the Giants with that knee injury, so going to be nice to have him back. Going over the Ravens injury report real quick, Malik Harrison, Arthur Mollette, and Broderick Washington, they didn't practice today. They will be out for Sunday's game. And then everybody else on the Ravens injury report, they're going to play. Even the guys that are questionable, they're probably going to play like Marlon Humphrey and Ronnie Stanley. They were questionable. Well, they are questionable. They're probably going to play. No worries for them. So that is the injury report. All right. So moving on to keys to victory, I have three for the offense, three for the defense. Let's start on the offensive side of the ball. First key to victory for them. Keep Jaden Daniels upright. This is to the offensive line. Do not allow Jaden Daniels to get sacked a bunch. And they have done a really good job of that really all season. I mean, I think week one against the Bucks, Jaden got sacked once or twice. No, last week against the Browns, he only got sacked three times. But that's pretty good against a Browns defensive line that is really good. So the O-line has done a really good job of keeping Jaden upright. They haven't allowed him to get hit a bunch of times. Shout out to Brandon Coleman and Cornelius Lucas. I really love that left tackle tandem right there. I assume that Brandon Coleman will probably take over at some point this season, but I really like the rotation with them right now. The interior offensive lineman, Nick Allegretti, Sam Cosby, Tyler Biotis. Tyler Biotis has been one of the best centers in football this season, and it's not being talked about enough, so I want to make sure he gets his respect because he is doing an amazing job at protecting Jaden Daniels this season. He's done a great job run blocking. All of our offensive linemen have really done a great job run blocking this season, especially Cosby, obviously Biotis, and Allegretti. And then Andrew Wiley, he's been pretty impressive so far this season. He's been really good. Uh, shout out to Bobby Johnson, 
OG Bobby Johnson or O-line Bobby Johnson, man. He's done a really good job coaching these guys up, getting these guys, you know, in shape. These guys have done a tremendous job of keeping Jaden upright. And this week's another test. You know, the Ravens' defensive line, they got some guys on there. They got Adafe Owe. I know they got David Ajabo. They got Justin BK, who just got paid this offseason. And they also have Kyle Van Noy, who has six sacks on the season, which is ridiculous. I think Kyle Van Noy is like 32 at this point, so he has six sacks. That's really freaking good. They have 16 sacks in total as a defense, which is pretty solid at six in the NFL right now. So, you know, they can get to the quarterback. At times, they can get to the quarterback. So we have to make sure we keep Jaden upright. And if we do, and, you know, the great thing is that Jaden has legs. He can escape out of the pocket whenever he feels pressure. But we have to make sure we keep Jaden upright. All right, moving on to key to victory number two. And this has been a key for the past couple of weeks now. I mean, I think it's been a key for me since the beginning of the season, really. And it's establishing the run game. Now, I know the Ravens got the best run defense in the NFL. They're only giving up 60.4 yards a game on the ground. That is insane. That run defense is stout. Now, the thing is, they haven't faced a rushing attack like ours at any point in the season. Isaiah Pacheco week one. Pacheco cool, but other than Pacheco, the Chiefs don't really got any other guys that can really run the rock. The Ravens did a pretty good job of, you know, containing Pacheco. Week two, uh, Alexander Madison is a mere right. Come on now. I mean, B-Rob, even without B-Rob, Eckler, McNichols, JD clears those two. Um, Rico Dowdle in week number three against the Cowboys. I mean, Rico Dowdle, I didn't even know Rico Dowdle existed before really last season. And then Zeke Elliott, I mean, our run offense is way better than the Cowboys run offense. Week four, who do they play week four? I want to say they play the Bills. They play the Bills on Sunday Night Football. James Cook, he's cool. I would take our rushing attack over, you know, James Cook and the Bills rushing attack. And then week five against the Bengals, I mean, Zach Moss and Chase Brown. So they haven't faced a rushing attack like ours yet. So we could still establish a run game. And even if we don't, we still got to run the ball because our identity is balancing the run game in the past game and we've done a great job at running the ball so far this season i mean 178.4 yards on the ground per game that is really good we're number two guess who's number one the ravens and we're gonna get to that um when we go to the defensive side of the ball they're rushing for 201 yards a game so that is really good right there so we have to do a good job of running the ball against the ravens and I'm not saying it won't be a challenge. It's going to be a challenge. Every week's a challenge, but especially against this Ravens defensive line. They got Beaks up the middle. They got Adafi Owe. They got Roquan Smith. They got Kyle Hamilton, who plays in the box. So they got a lot of guys on that front seven who we need to account for. But I think we can definitely run the ball on them. Running to the outside may be the key here because, man, they got some big guys up the middle. I think they got Michael Pierce. They got Justin Matabike. So... Running the ball to the outside might be the key for this game. And JD's obviously, you know, great at doing that. Eckler is really good at doing that. McNichols. We're probably going to be without B-Rob this week, which sucks, like I stated. But I think we should still do a solid job of running the ball this week if we can create the right matchups, the right, you know, run play calls. So I think we should still be able to run the ball this week. But if not, then we're probably going to have to rely on on the pass game this week. And I'm not saying like air it out like 40, 50 times, but we have to create some really good play calls in the pass game, which we're about to get to in a second. But key to victory number two, wrapping this up, establish a run game and establish a run game very early. Key to victory number three, the last key for the offensive side of the ball. Let's attack that Ravens pass defense because their pass defense is pretty atrocious now. When I mean attack, I don't mean like air it out 40, 50 times. Not doing that, all right? We're not doing that. We're still going to run the ball. Although that Ravens run D is really good. I feel like we'll still be able to break off some pretty good runs uh, with Jaden Daniels, with Austin Eckler, with Jeremy McNichols. But that pass defense is pretty atrocious. They rank second to last in pass defense, allowing about uh, 280 yards a game, which is not great i'm pretty sure the jaguars are last i think they're allowing about 285 somewhere around there but we have to take advantage of this weak pass defense kyle hamilton he's an absolute dog probably going to be the highest paid safety in the nfl in a year or two but marlon humphrey he's probably going to play 
I'm not afraid of Marlon, man. The last time, you know, we played the Ravens back in 2020, Terry was cooking Marlon Humphrey left and right. So don't think Marlon can check Terry. Um, their other cornerbacks, Brandon Stevens, I, Ravens fans do not like him. They think he is pretty bad. Nate Wiggins, haven't really noticed a lot of him this season. I don't think the Ravens have given him a whole ton of snaps. Um, so if somebody could let me know like what he's done this season, please do in the comment section. Um, but there's him. You also have, I forgot who their other safety is. I should have done research um, on who their other safety is. Um, but their DBs overall aren't the greatest. Um, Marlon Humphrey, I think he has two interceptions on this season, so not bad. But he, I don't think he can check Terry, like I said. He couldn't in 2020, and I feel like he's fallen off since 2020. So I definitely think that Terry could have a day on him. And then Kyle Hamilton, he's good as well. But everybody else, not that good. So definitely can take advantage of of this week Ravens passing defense cliff man you better get in your bag this week you've been in your bag all season long let's get in the bag this week man so last key to victory let's get this pass game going I want to see us spread the ball out obviously to Terry to Zach Ertz and Noah Brown who's coming back this week Luke McCaffrey I think Luke should get a lot more targets Olamide Zacchaeus so key to victory number three once again let's attack that weak Ravens pass defense. Moving on to the defensive side of the ball, key to victory number one for the defense, contain Lamar, and it's going to be hard to contain Lamar. I'm not going to lie. I mean, you already know, man. Lamar, he's deadly, especially when he gets outside of the pocket, and we can contain him inside the pocket. I feel like we have to make Lamar beat us with his arm, and I'm not saying Lamar has a bad arm or anything, but you already know what he can do you know, on the ground with this rushing ability. So we have to make him beat us with this arm, in my opinion. Um, and also, we have to limit big plays. That goes along with the key as well, you know. Uh, the Ravens, they be getting big plays left and right. I mean, y'all saw the runs with Derrick Henry over the past two weeks, really. Lamar, he's capable of, you know, obviously getting big plays on the ground and through the air. So limiting big plays is definitely going to be key. We've done a really good job of that over the past two weeks against the Cardinals and the Browns, but... You know, the Cardinals offense, I would say it's pretty good, okay? The Browns offense is atrocious, but, you know, I don't want to discredit our defense or anything. Our defense was elite versus the Browns last week, but, you know, we're going up against a different animal in that Ravens offense, man, with Lamar, obviously, at quarterback. Their weapons aren't too bad. Mark Andrews, I don't know what's been going on with Mark Andrews this season. He has not done anything, really. Charlie Kohler and Isaiah Likely have been the Ravens' tight end one and two so far this season, which is kind of strange to see. But is what it is. Uh, Rashad Bateman, he's actually had some nice catches so far this season. Zay Flowers is a still pretty good receiver. Um, I think they have Nelson Aguilar still. I'm not 100% sure. But they don't have terrible weapons. Honestly, you could say our weapons are better than the Ravens' weapons. But the Ravens, they got an elite quarterback like Lamar Jackson. So their weapons don't need to be as good as some teams weapons so that's what just makes their team so good man with Lamar at quarterback I mean I already know I don't need to explain this to y'all but you know we got to keep Lamar in the pocket and we have to limit you know big plays from happening and like I said we've done a good job of that over the past two weeks Lawrence Armstrong he's really come alive over the past two weeks love to keep seeing that from him Luvu he's doing Luvu things Wagner he's doing the Wagner things Dante Fowler Jr., he's done a good job getting pressure. Payne and Allen, they've done a really good job of getting to the quarterback these past two weeks, and hopefully, you know, they can keep it up. So, key number two, just to close it right here, let's contain Lamar Jackson inside the pocket, make him beat us with his arm, and limit big plays. Key to victory number two, we have to find a way to contain Derrick Henry, and yeah, it's going to be hard. Like Lamar Jackson, containing him will be very hard but Derrick Henry man he's an absolute dog I don't think people understand how big Derrick Henry is sometimes he's 6'3 250 some pounds man he is an absolute tank so it'll be hard to stop him but I believe that we can do it you know Dan Quinn and Joe Wood Jr they've been asked about it all week long and they said you know they have a specific tackling plan for him obviously with every running back they face on their schedule but with Derrick Henry they have a unique one and I'll be interested to see how that looks on Sunday because it's going to be very hard to stop Derrick Henry. Obviously, Bobby Wagner, he is a tackling machine. Frankie Luvu, he flies around. But, man, Derrick Henry, he's an absolute beast. And it's going to be tough to, you know, contain him. But if we can hold him to, like, maybe, I would say maybe one, two, maybe three good runs, and I feel like that would be a success for our defense because that man, 
that man is just absolutely different. So key to victory number two, try our best to contain Derrick Henry. And then my last key to victory for the defensive side of the ball, if ball is life, let's create some turnovers and specifically interceptions. Joe Wood Jr. said in his press conference this week that he has never gone five weeks into a season without a single interception in any season, which is really bad. Like, that's bad. Um, we haven't gotten an interception this year, and we've struggled getting interceptions over the past couple years now, maybe like five, six years. So we got to start creating turnovers and specifically interceptions. We have gotten three straight fumbles in the past, uh, I think, three games. Actually, no, we got one against the Cardinals, we got one against the Browns, and we got one against the Giants. So it's not three straight games, but we have gotten three fumbles this year. So we have to start creating turnovers more, but specifically interceptions because if ball is life, interceptions, man. We got to create some interceptions. Quan Martin, you almost had one last week. You have to keep your hands on the ball. You got to come down with the catch, man. So once again, if ball is life, let's create some turnovers and more specifically interceptions. And in this game, it'll be important because this might be a shootout. So it might be... Whoever makes the first mistake will win this game, but could be wrong, man. I could definitely be wrong. So once again, we got to create turnovers, but more specifically, interceptions. I have us losing this game, unfortunately, dropping to 4-2, 34-30. to 30. I do think it'll be a shootout, but I think the Ravens will edge it out, get the dub at their own stadium. Maybe if we played at home, maybe I would lean to our side, but it's going to be a hard-fought game. But I feel like the Ravens are just going to edge this one out. Lamar is just different. Derrick Henry, different. I'm not sure if our defense will be able to stop them. They've been playing really good over the past two weeks. But Lamar, Derrick Henry, and that Ravens offense is just a different animal. That offense is just a different animal. And I'm not sure if our defense will be able to keep up with them. Um, our offense obviously is really good as well. But... Maybe at some point in the game, they'll be able to figure us out, maybe force us to punt, and then the Ravens offense come back onto the field. I think it's going to be a shootout at some point, though. The Ravens, they're going to pull away, and they're going to end up winning this game. So that is my prediction. I think Jaden Daniels will have a good game. Uh, I think Terry McLaurin, he's going to have a good game. I think Austin Eckler, Jeremy McNichols, they're both going to have solid games and our weapons. They're going to get involved as well. Maybe Deami has a catcher too. And Noah Brown, he'll have some catches. Lou McCaffrey, Olamide Zacchaeus, uh, Zach Ertz. I think we'll be doing a good job of spreading the ball around. I think Cliff has another good you know, play calling game. But at the end of the day, I don't think we'll just do quite enough to come out of the bank with a W. But comment down below your score predictions. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave a like down below, subscribe, turn on notifications. I'm on the road to 4,000 subscribers, so if you could, hit that sub button. I'd really appreciate it. And other than that, it's been King Sean, and I'm out. Peace.